Well, guys, it is official. I'm sure you might have seen, uh, but Graham Stephan is leaving California, and I thought I would kind of give my response to this. This is something I've been talking with him about for a long, long time. He released a video today on why he's leaving California, and uh, he's actually moving out to my city, Las Vegas, and uh, we're actually going to be neighbors, so he's buying the house next to the house that I'm building Super, super exciting. I'm super excited for him. This is something we've gone back and forth on many, many times. I thought we'd kind of check out his video, see his point of view, and I'll kind of talk you guys through it a little bit. As you can see, look at this. Look at the view count. 113,000 views in one hour. Even for Graham, that's ridiculous. I think this is his highest viewed video in the first hour in the history of his YouTube channel. Absolutely. Look at this. Financial. I'm on my account. Financial education. Uh, two viewers are also watch this channel and are watching this video. Okay. Let's go ahead. Let me. Let's check out this video together and um, let's talk about this a bit. I think it will be quite interesting. Oh, here we go. Oh, it's not a day trading ad. Woo! It's not a day trading ad. Usually, it's some day trading course ad. Okay. First off, of let's smash a thumbs up for him. Up and moving out. Experts say over the past decade, around 150,000 people have left the state. The U.S. Census Bureau says California had a net loss of 190,000 people last year. I'm out of here. Yeah. When, when do you leave? Soon. Give him some comment Texas. interaction. Yeah, I'm going to go to Texas. Well, this is certainly not the video I was expecting to make, but it is official. I am moving out of California. This is not a decision that was taken lightly. In fact, I've rejected the idea for years because California has always been my home. I was raised in Los Angeles. I went through the LA school system. My friends are here. I built my business here. And I don't think I would have the same perspectives I do now had I grown up anywhere else. So to... And I, I can sympathize with that. I mean, leaving the you know the place you grew up in, things like that, that's tough. And that's something you know him and I have always you know kind of gone back on. He's like, well, I'm not sure if I'd be as happy if I moved out of California and those sorts of things. So I can definitely respect that point extent, of view. Extent growing up in Los Angeles has shaped me into who I am today. But lately, it's been an ongoing struggle to stay. And more often than not, I've been coming up with fewer and fewer justifications of why I should not just pick up and leave to go somewhere else until I did just that. A few weeks ago, I put down a deposit to buy a home in Las Vegas, Nevada, and in a few months, that will officially be my new full-time residence. This is something I've been thinking about for a few years now, although it's always just been a distant thought that I've pushed further and further behind, because why fix what isn't broke? Breaking point came when my girlfriend and I were visiting some friends in Las Vegas, and Jeremy decided to give us an impromptu home tour across some of the areas of Summerlin and Henderson. There wasn't tra- I thought that was really important because, you know, like I said, for years, uh, Graham and I have been talking about this idea and he's been kind of flirting around with it because, you know, Graham makes really good money. And so the tax system, the way California set up, the taxes are so high. So that's already like a negative. Never mind some other things he's going to get into probably in this video um, are, are big negatives. But the tax implications alone in, in Nevada, you have zero state income tax because, you know, basically our taxes are paid for by the gaming industry, essentially. So. What I wanted to do is I was like, I got to really like take him to the suburbs, take him to the areas that you might actually live because usually he's spending, you know, if you come to Vegas, where do you, where do you, where are you at? You're on the strip. People don't even know there's like great quality of life if you go off the strip and you go to, you know, communities like Henderson, Summerlin, some of these areas. So I said, you know what, I got to go ahead and take him and actually show him like, like what life is like in these areas and things like that. Let's look at the parks. Let's look at the homes. Let's look at the restaurants and those sorts of things. So there wasn't trash just thrown everywhere. Prices were really affordable. And something that afternoon just switched in that maybe now is the right time to make this happen. See, previously, before the shutdown, I felt like there was an opportunity cost of leaving Los Angeles. This was an area where everyone was moving to. Why do they show ads like this? Like, what is that? Why see this? Stop seeing this ad. Come on, man. Inappropriate. That's what inappropriate ad. Come on, YouTube. What is that? Great spot to network. Macy had a great job going into the office every day. And the thought of picking all of that up, cutting ties and leaving was just too much. But once everything was shut down and both of us went entirely remote, there was the realization that we could work from pretty much anywhere. And we don't have to be anchored to one specific city to lead a fulfilling and happy life. Not to mention on paper, I'm not a... It's a thing. Graham can work literally anywhere. He, you know, records YouTube videos. I, he, I believe he has a mentorship group and things like that. And so his, he can do it anywhere. Like he could be in Vegas. He could be, uh, I don't know, in Monaco. <laughs> he could be in Hawaii. He doesn't have to be in one of the most expensive places to live literally in the world. Um, certainly. As to how much money I would be saving if I moved to a no-income tax state like many have done before me. And that's now a number that's grown to the point where I can no longer ignore the cost-benefit of moving. Now I realize this has almost become the new trend for people to publicly talk 
about leaving California, and this just feeds into the notion that everyone is fleeing the state. But truth be told, as a Los Angeles resident who grew up here my entire life, who never thought they would ever leave, I could say from my own experience, the benefits of living here have diminished significantly over the last few years. And while the reasons behind this are complex, these are some of the issues that stood out in my decision. By the way, this is usually the point in the video where if you've not already hit the like button, it helps me out tremendously. Just give it a quick tap. It's totally free. It takes just a We got you, Graham. We got you. Mighty YouTube algorithm. So with that said, thank you so much for doing that, and we'll begin here. First, let's talk briefly about taxes, because I'm sure this is what most of you want to hear about, so I will address it. For those who don't know, California... I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to skip the ad, Graham. I apologize, man. I'm recording a video here. To 20 homes at a time. This is my student Brent. He just did this exact same thing. Did he, he really? 2.5 million dollars to go out and flip seven. California has the highest state income tax across the entire U.S. and it's as high highest as state income tax in the entire now, U.S. Long career, I've always been supportive of paying my fair share and making sure I support the state that's allowed me so many unique opportunities and experiences. In fact, in a way, this is almost the cost of doing business and getting to reap the benefits of living in the city. For example, maybe someone pays an extra ten thousand dollars a year in tax, but by doing so, they're able to make an extra forty thousand dollars a year. So in those situations, the tax more than pays for itself. But lately, I've been feeling like I'm getting less and less for the taxes that are contributed. And from a cost benefit standpoint, there's a lot I'm leaving on the table if I choose to stay. And when it comes to the future and wanting to start a family and wanting to use that money to have a much larger impact on the world one day, the cost of taxes is something I need to evaluate. And on the surface, from a number standpoint. The compounding effect. I mean, imagine if, you know, I, I don't know how much Graham will save by just in taxes, but let's just say Graham saves a quarter million dollars a year by being in Vegas versus, you know, California, right? Um, you know, over, over a 10 year span, let's say you save a quarter million each year, that's over $2 million, right? That's not even the biggest number. So imagine when that's compounded. Imagine you invest that money in the stock market and get X amount of gains or invest that in real estate and get X amount of gains, right? The compounding effect is it, it ends up adding up when you make really good money. It's going to end up adding up to five, 10, 15, 20 million dollars over a 10, 20 year span. It's, it's, it's incredible. And that's all, that's all extra money you can, I don't know, give to charity if you want or, you know, create generational wealth or whatever you want to decide to do with that money. It's just a lot more money that's going to be in your pocket at the end of the day, essentially. The state would save me a lot. And, and by the way, Graham's pretty brave for coming out because remember, Graham is uh, historically, he's been in the real estate industry in California. So I think it's really brave that he came out. I'm sure a lot of people didn't like him coming out about this, uh, leaving California. But, you know, I applaud Graham for, for being truthful and honest about this and open and willing to share this, even though some people might judge him for leaving California when, you know, he built his business in California and things like that. So just this year alone, I'm estimating I'll pay about $400,000 towards California state income tax. And last year I paid about $200,000 towards state income. $400,000. He's talking about paying to state. Remember, I just said a quarter million. He's talking about $400,000, 400,000. Let's say he does that every year for the next 10 years. That's $4 million. Never mind when you start compounding the numbers out. If you invest that money, that's incredible money. I mean, wow. <sighs> And never mind if you feel like the money's being wasted. He was telling me a story recently that he built a bathroom for like $2 million, a simple like public restroom. And he said like somebody else built it private uh, for like $50,000 and it was a better bathroom. Like, you know, if you feel like your money's being squandered, it's like... None of which, by the way, is deductible on a federal level. So I'm at the point where I have to closely monitor where my money is allocated and if it's worth relocating to a place where everything goes a lot further. As most of you know, I'm all about long-term compounded growth when you invest your money. And in my current income, a $300,000 a year savings could turn into $9 million 15 years from now. That's a wow. lot of money to go to that was only at what was that a seven percent rate of return something like that what let's see here it's a lot further as most of you know i'm all about long-term compounded growth when you invest your money and in my current income a three hundred thousand dollar a year savings could turn into nine million dollars that's only at a seven percent rate of return right jeez nine million oh, holy smoke is this ain't no joke because you got to be flipping years, so that's a lot of money that could go towards the projects organizations and innovations i want to directly support and as i continue to grow my career and expand this is something i want to be very diligent of not to mention los angeles taxes just about everything they have one of the highest sales taxes in the nation at close to 10 percent. and the city also has a business tax on top of everything else that they require you to pay into if you're working within the city as an independent contractor or sole proprietor there's it's competition man it's just like business business is competition these states are competing with each other so much to keep track of, and it makes it very difficult to understand where your money is going or how it's being spent. A second, it's also incredibly unfortunate that homelessness and crime has been a major problem of Los Angeles for as long as they've been alive. Although in the last few years, it's taken a drastically different turn. It's been nearly impossible to walk down the street without stepping past drug usage, tents, trash, and people who are not being treated appropriately. It's an epidemic that's not been properly addressed, and the state has not found a way to remedy this. That was something I covered on the channel, I think, last week on my main channel, kind of what was going on, what I've, you know, in New York and California and some of these places. You know, I didn't feel 
the most appropriate talking about that subject since I don't really live there and I can't really talk from experience. Um, I just visit there, you know, a couple times a year and so I get to see it for myself. But coming from somebody that actually lives there, and give people the adequate care they need. It's gotten to the point where my girlfriend does not feel safe to walk down to the grocery store at night because there are people shouting and throwing things on the sidewalk as they make their way down the street. Subsequently, crime has also increased. In downtown LA, some parts have seen more than a 200% increase in crime. And while the entire situation is very complex to solve, it just seems like there's so much happening all at once that it can't adequately be addressed in the way that it needs. And we certainly don't want this to be taken the wrong way because I am not the victim. The real victims here are the people on the streets. But it's frustrating to see a lack of care for the mentally ill or people sleeping on the sidewalks with very few resources to turn to. Now, you would assume that California, with a $3.2 trillion G GDP would have the financial means to properly handle the situation and give people the proper attention that they need. But they haven't, and it's only gotten worse. People with severe mental illness are left on the streets to fend for themselves. People struggling with addiction are thrown to the side, and care facilities are too overcrowded to accommodate everyone. People with disabilities have nowhere to turn, so they're ignored and they're left to beg on the beach. It's a problem that desperately needs attention, and the shutdown has only worsened everything by many magnitudes. Now, this is a very sobering realization of what many parts of Los Angeles are now like. Here's a Google Street View image from September of 2004. What kind of ad are we going to get this time? When is the last time that a verified uh, million dollar trader has ever offered to help you for free? Learn how Kyle made these actual profits by avoiding these seven deadly trading sets. Once upon a time, I was actually down $8,000 when I first started. Oh, yeah. And that's because I made all the classic trading mistakes oh, yeah. you can make. Oh, yeah. That's why I want you to avoid these. Okay. I have now made a checklist. Okay, dude. I'm in. In 14, and here is the exact same Whoa. spot. Now, just a few years later, it's sad to see that we have not found a proper way to help the situation. That was and insane. Instead, we've largely just ignored the core issues or offered too little too late. Jeez. Lastly, I think it's no surprise that the cost of living in Los Angeles is really high, and there's a premium that you pay to live in an area where you can drive to the beach, to the mountains, to the desert, and to Disneyland, all in the same day with 75 degree weather year round. But that cost comes at the expense of nearly everything. The obvious one is housing. Now, I've always made. I don't know about all that weather thing. I saw there were like several days this summer in LA where it was 90 plus. I was like, dang, like you look back at the weather. I was like, it was a hot summer in LA. And I'm like, you're paying all that premium to, you know, that you can't definitely wasn't 75 every day. Budget if you're creative and you don't mind putting in the work. For example, I was able to buy my duplex in the middle of the city for zero dollars out of pocket through a series of strategic renovations and refinances that allowed me to live in there for nothing while I rented out the other side. But still, the initial purchase price of that home was enough to purchase a mansion in any other part of the country. <laughs> and here's what's happening. Right now, everything in Los Angeles is dictated by parking. Every unit you build is required to have its own dedicated parking space. So if you want to go and build a 600 square foot apartment, for example, you also have to include another 300 square feet for that resident to park their car. So that then leads the question, where are you going to build that parking space? If you put it on ground level, that takes away from the square footage you could build in terms of living area. But then if you want to go and dig below ground, that ends up costing a significant amount of money. So either way, that needs to be factored in the cost of building the unit, and then that cost gets passed on to the customer. But then if that cost is too expensive for someone to buy, the developer just says, well, it's not worth building then, I'm not going to build anything. Now, it's also required that each unit have 100 square feet of planted open space on site. And 50% of that space must be common space. So that just means right there, if you want to build a 600 square foot apartment, what you're really paying for is 1,100 square feet when you account for the parking space and open common area. <laughs> that just now means that creating new housing in Los Angeles becomes so expensive that the developer cannot create new housing without Without calling it a luxury apartment building and charging a lot of money for it because otherwise they would lose money on the project. It just becomes impossible to create any affordable housing when you're required to allocate so much space and so many resources to things that not everyone will use. Of course, then you get into the nuances of not in my backyard or turning a residential area of single family homes into multifamily homes, which of course I get to a certain degree. But still, you should be able to redevelop an existing apartment building to add more units without that being just another luxury apartment building. But Los Angeles has yet to find a way to do this, thereby driving up prices because it requires developers to build spaces that aren't given their most practical, useful purpose. Beyond that, there's also the issues of rampant. Oh boy. What day trading ad are we going to get this time? This is quite entertaining. Hi, my name is Jeff Clark. Oh, hey, Jeff. Today, I want to show you something just a little bit crazy. Show me it. In just a moment, I'm going to take you out on the wild streets of Northern California, where I'm going to conduct a money-generating experiment. No way! Now, specifically, I'm going to test out a simple but little-known financial move. Jeff, no way! All the purchases that I'm going to make today. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in! I've never done this experiment before. No way. So I'm not sure You've never done it? Though. You know, it's possible I might get kicked out of a few stores, and frankly... Jeff, you're the man! Hibbit wildfires, air quality issues, horrendous traffic at all hours, business tax and regulation, and a myriad of other issues, none of which, by the way, are political. But finally, something had to give, and eventually it did. And it seems like moving out of California has become more and more and more and more common now that remote working is...
That's the thing. I don't know why people politicize it. Like if you're <clears throat> speaking up about these problems, like you must be a Republican or you're anti-Democrat or something like that. It's like, no, we're just like, you know, like somebody that lives there is like speaking about the problems. It doesn't have to be politicized. We're just, you know, they're just speaking on facts of what they have to deal with on an everyday basis. It's like, yeah, I don't get they it. Accept it. I've spoken with a lot of realtors out in Las Vegas and all of them have confirmed exactly what I've thought. Most of the buyers in the one to two million dollar price point are coming from California and they're all leaving for the same reasons as I am. Many of those buyers are also potentially worried about increasing California tax rates and potential wealth tax and the unknowns of what California might try to instate. So they feel like getting out now is better than waiting, especially if they're able to operate a remote working environment. I'm also thinking about this decision long term as well. One day I would love to start a family and there's the concern that California could get much worse if nothing is done. Crime rates, traffic, trash, air quality, congestion, taxes and business regulation make it very difficult to want to stay. And the differences in terms of quality of life is just too significant to ignore. Now, if you're curious why Las Vegas, that's a good question. I wanted to be somewhere driving distance of Los Angeles because I own property here. My girlfriend and I both have family here. And it's easy to drive here and vacation for a weekend without much forethought. I like the idea of just being a four hour drive away from everything in the event something came up. And if I moved to any other area, it would require. That's why I love Vegas. Like um, four hours from LA, right? About four and a half hours from San Diego, four hours from Phoenix, um, two hours away from St. George, Utah. And so I, I love just like the fact that I'm like close to all these areas. Uh, I'm like, like if you live in Summerlin, you're about 45 minutes from the mountains in Mount Charleston where you can go get cool air, like run up there, go hiking in the summer. And it's like 75, 80 degrees. It's beautiful up in the forest. It's like literally a 45 minute drive. So it's like the location is phenomenal to book a plane ticket and a lot more planning than simply just jumping in the car last minute and then navigating on autopilot. We also both have a lot of friends and business connections in Las Vegas, some of which just happen to have moved from LA to Vegas years before us. So it just kind of makes some sense to move with the tide and join them. Now, I'm still going to keep all my properties. I'm still going to keep my home here so we have a place to return back to for vacations. But for all other purposes, it just makes too much sense to pick up and move to Nevada. Now, on the positive side here, geographically, California is a beautiful place to live that has a lot to offer. And I believe there's always going to be demand for people who want to live by the coast. But for me, the opportunity cost of not moving just got to a place where it's worth it to move. Now, when it comes to you, absolutely nothing changes. I'm still to be making the exact same content and building out an even better filming set in Las Vegas. And I'm also gonna His filming set's gonna be epic. I, I won't spill the beans, but it's gonna be epic. That's all I have to say about that. Epic. In a space that's exactly the same over there as I have right here, so visually you're not gonna even be able to tell there was a difference. But I also can't say that I'm not sad to see so many people leaving and for the city I grew up in to degrade so quickly. And for the quality of living to go down so fast while also feeling like there's no real solution to work. That's the thing, like so many people are in Graham's situation where they've seen it getting worse and worse and worse and they're getting like really frustrated and so it's like, like what happens if they don't correct this? Like if they start to turn around and it gets better, that's one thing, but what if it continues to get worse and worse and worse? You end up in this kind of downward snowball. So um, like I said, I, you know, I, I'm looking super forward to Graham getting out here. Uh, Graham, I applaud you for, you know, having kind of the courage to come out and speak like this because you're from the real estate industry in California. And I'm sure a lot of people are watching this video who don't want you to say anything negative about California or LA or anything. And the fact that you're willing to speak up and, and tell your truth is huge. Okay. And it's not like you're the only one. There's a lot of those folks. So, uh, you know, if you want to check out the video, tell Graham, wish him well on his endeavors and things like that. Go, go check out his video and uh, leave him a comment and things like that. So, uh, but anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this. I had to react to this since, you know, I'm involved in this whole situation and, um, yeah, let me know your guys' opinion in that comment section. I would love to hear from you guys as always. Have a great day. Peace. Oh, by the way, free Discord chat. Stock market Discord chat just launched. It will be the pinned comment. Peace, guys.